So here we go again. Today I'm going to up pot my fig trees. I have a three gallon fig tree that needs to be up potted into a seven gallon. And usually I go right around 15 gallons and the ones that I really want to keep, I put into a really big pot. So I'll show you that all right here. So this morning I've been doing some weeding and I got all my loveliness set up here for you guys to show you how I up pot my figs. So. As you can see, I have my pots and my fertilizers and the stuff I use in my soil to transplant my fig tree that's sitting here in a three gallon into a seven gallon. Uh, the larger pot over on the side is for another tree that needs to be put into a better pot. The pots I bought from Lowe's that look kind of terracotta, but they're not a double wall, are just not holding up. They only lasted for two years, and they're starting to crumble when I try to uh, move them around because they're big trees. Anyway, um, here I have for you my Fox Farm uh, products for soil that I love to use for a lot of things. Um, the Happy Frog Jumpstart here is really great because it already has kind of like these uh, chips in it that I like, the pine bark. And then um, this is just a wonderful soil conditioner. Um, I love to use it. They don't have these big bags anymore. They've been discontinued. They're now a smaller bag. But the guy gave me a deal. So I got $14 for three cubic. I got $14 for the two cubic. And then I had all this other stuff around. Um, Epsoma is starting to become very expensive. Of course, all fertilizers are. Um, I have the fish emulsion that I use right here. Um, Hosta Grow is a great alternative to like Miracle Grow if you want to be more natural. Um, this is a hydroponic store I got this for. Um, the Roots Organic HPK. That's really good for the blooms to develop or the um, fruit to develop as well. And then I have my vitamin B1, which is a really great um, for plants that are being transplanted and need to um, have a little of the stress taken away. And then as you can see, I have the pine bark chips here just to show you. Uh, this is azomite. This is a volcanic ash in this one cup here. This cup here is um, pelletized slow release lime, which is great for fig trees. They love it. I usually put that on top and sprinkle some into the soil as well. Then of course, BioStart is great for the roots. So I'll be putting some of that in. I do that in all my garden when I transplant shrubs and stuff. And then down here, I have Job's vegetable and tomato fertilizer, which is excellent for fig trees. So that is what I use. And all this is slow release. So this is something you can do in the spring. You can do it in the fall because by the time summer comes along, your trees are just starting. It's just starting to like break down in the soil that then they start to utilize it in the spring. So I don't worry about using this product now. And, um, and since it already has figs on it, this is my Stella. Since it already has figs on it, I can use some of that HPK, which I did already give them all a dose, so probably today I won't. But the B1 and the um, some of the other slow releases I will be using today. So let me set this up and I'll get started transplanting my tree and showing you how I get it into the pot. Okay, here I stand. Um, the first thing I do is I plug the holes. Um, fig trees love good drainage, but I don't like my holes to release all the dirt that I'm going to put in my pot. So I take bark and bark chips that I find around my yard, or if I gotten get a bag from the store, I will open it up and I'll put a one like that. Oops. And then as I pour it in, I make sure that these stay up just just to hold the dirt in so that it doesn't go everywhere. Forgot the scissors. <laughs> You can see the soil is really nice. It doesn't have really the good size chips that you need. You really need these size chips. So put up screen. But I'll get 
some dirt in here just to keep these pieces of thingamabobs in place. These, there we go. I don't have to worry about that dirt falling out as I'm trying to do this. Some people, if you have a really wet area, they drill holes on the bottom as well. But in my area right now, I don't, I, I haven't seemed to have a problem with any, any root rot at all whatsoever. So I don't worry about that, but maybe if you live in a tropical climate or something, you might need to. So now that I got that in there, I'm going to, so I know my things aren't going to fall. Let's see if I can get this in quicker. There we go. This does have that perlite in it. Let me get some of this. Now, this bag smells wonderful. And you sometimes will find this stuff in your dirt. Don't worry about it. That's the microcananza. If I'm saying it right, that is just developing in the dirt, which is wonderful. So, um, I would not worry about that at all. It's just, it's been activated and it's starting to grow. So, there we go. Got that. So these are chips from where I walk a lot. And I'll incorporate this, some of this, because I couldn't find a bag at the store anymore. Hopefully they get some more in. And um, I mix that really well into the dirt as well. I learned this from a fig guy down uh, south of me in uh, ooh, Michigan. He does that with his fig trees and he's had very great, very good luck without it being the roots getting root bound and all that. So that kind of is a nice thing. So let me get some more chips. Okay, I got some chips from my garden. Sometimes I find little seeds from my tree or bugs or ants. I really don't worry about that. Um, probably down south again. You guys deal with a lot more junk down there. Uh, might want to make sure there's not any <laughs> cut ants or anything in there, I don't know. But there it is. So now I added that. Now I'll add some more soil. And soon I gotta get my plant in there and make sure that is going to be, I already got probably too much in there for the whole thing, but I gotta trick up my sleeve. I've seen other people do it now and um, uh, a lot of growers will use it, but ooga. Oh, he's heavy. It's actually pretty heavy for a little little guy. So I'm gonna get these chips off the top of the uh, pot here. And we use those at the end. You can see, I think you can see how nice the roots are in here. And uh, just doing really well. So anyhow, come on, Stella. Let's see if we can get you to loosen up a little. There she goes. There we go. Well, she's not root bound yet. She's got some roots starting to circle. So what I do, let me get her over here and set her down softly. So I brought over some of my stuff. This is the volcanic ash. I, I love to use it. I, you know, I figure with just my own reading that figs come and grow really well where there's volcanoes, like in Italy. So I'm figuring they're getting a lot of volcanic ash, right? And then lime. I don't put a lot of lime in this part. I usually put on top, but I am going to put a little at the bottom. And then I have my Job's Atomic Tomato. And I'm going to put a full cup in because it's slow release. And that'll help those roots. And plus, I'm going to put the pot in here. But I want to mix this in. Because I know that the nutrients are going to go all the way to the bottom. So I didn't put it, like, right at the very bottom. Unless I was putting, like, a really big fig tree back in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the pot that Stella came out of. And I'm going to set this in here. And get the pot. So it's flat on the bottom and the sides and then uh ooh, get it right in the center too she's a little off center so you know what i can just turn her in her pot because i like my trees being upright Oop. and this is really dry i should have maybe moistened this just a little bit just so it would be a little easier to get it in 
There we go. So here we are. There she is. She's doing really well. A little bit of circling, but not much. And um, so here we go. I'm going to put her in here. Uh, I want her to sit pretty center. And I should have trained her a little bit earlier to not grow so crooked. But since she is already hardened off, it's hard to get them to grow straight if that's what you want. You want to do it when they're green. But anyhow, so I got that in there. Now I'm going to add some more dirt. I'm just put it right on top because I'm going to just put it around the sides in a minute. Get a little more happy frog of the soil conditioner. Just gonna make this baby happy. There we go. And then I'm going to add some more of my azomite or volcanic ash. A little bit more lime here and there. Like I say, I'm gonna use that at the very top. A little bit more of this, which is Job's stuff, and I'm gonna mix it in as I put it in. And pack it. I'm hoping the, the water will do most of the settling. And uh, she's almost done. I have to move her tags up and out soon. I think she's a little, she's finally growing enough. I can get her tag here. Oh, it's actually on there really tight. There we go. There we go. I'll tighten it up here so she stays out of the way. There we go. There we are. We're almost done. I like to work without gloves. And here we're gonna put in the slow release line. And I just put that all on top. I won't probably give her any in the spring. Just mix that in a little. And then I'm gonna finish off with my chips. And that's it. And then I'll water her in with some of my nutrients. She's gonna need a few more chips. I might wait until next year when uh, I can buy some more. Rats, I forgot to put the biotone fertilizer in. So, I'll put the chips back into their thing here. Get them out of the way, and I'll kind of try, I'll just try to mix this in. It's better if it had been down below. But, you know, there, there's the biotone. <laughs> oh dear. One of the most important things, because some of the lime's gonna go down in there too. I'm not too fussy about it. I've never had an issue with a plant having issues. Uh, so sometimes I think people are a little too babyish around their plants. You could be a little bit tough with those buggers. You want them to survive. I wonder if I had to put him a little bit on an angle. Hmm. Maybe I'll try. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put him on an angle and see if I can get my tree to go a little bit up and break his roots here another thing i'm doing like you know you think of these things after you film it's annoying but i'm breaking the roots pushing them this way so that this tree will be a little bit more straighter in the pot because i have a hard time when i stack my pots i need them to be a certain way so let's see if that that made him a little straighter. That's kind of nice. I might have to stake it a little. Well, when I water it in, I'll make sure I push on this side and this side. Make sure he stays a little bit more upright. Oh yeah, he looks much better. Here, let me pull this back. Look how much better he looks. Remember seeing him in the beginning? He was on an angle going, whoop. Now he looks straighter. So I forgot about that. You can straighten your tree out too by cutting the roots on the bottom or whatever and getting it straight again. He looks so much better. If you'd like to leave in the comments some of the things that you do with your fig tree, I'd be interested to know what you use and products. I'm more of an all-natural, uh, non, uh, 
chemical-based fertilizers. So this is what I do, and I have had really good uh, results with my trees. And uh, I look forward to hearing what you have to say.